What's up, family? I'm gonna let somebody come come in. Let the people come in before we start. Okay, we got three people in this bitch already. Say, man, every time I come in my backyard, this motherfucker act like that's when they walk out their backyard, bro. Man, would I cut myself? Motherfucker act like they run out their damn backyard every fucking time, bro. Let me tell y'all something. Let me give y'all some game or something. If you could, for yo, for those who think they balling out of control, like they rich trying to act, act like they got it, got it, got it. Let me tell you something. If you could walk in your backyard and people could see it, see you in your backyard, you ain't you ain't that rich. You might be doing okay. That's like me. I didn't fell off like a bad bag of dope. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. But I ain't rich. Back in the days when I was into that wild shit, I had some change. And while I was staying, you couldn't see my backyard. I had trees planted and everything you couldn't see me and then i was a, a neighbor was a, a a good distance away nah shit, don't get me wrong I, I appreciate it i'm doing okay but i'm just talking to the people that understand your boundaries understand when you know who you're talking to and they know who i'm talking to there's a partner about it. i had to let it man i got it made but you ain't got it made because i'm looking around his house like dog you doing okay but cut it out my nigga i mean i'm happy you happy but nah nah it ain't like that Okay, we got enough people in here. I don't expect a lot of people to come. They got questions, man. Um, a lot of questions people send me, man, in my DMs. A lot of questions, man. And I ask them sometimes. Talk to me. I talk back. But this time I said the most questions I get asked the most time, I'm just going to cut on the video, go live, and answer these questions for y'all live, man. And um, I have them right here. Oh, hell no. Cigar, man. Nicaraguan cigar. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Nicaraguan cigar. First question. I get asked this all the time, bro. New Orleans is not a big, big city. Like, for those who be in big cities like I do. Like, you know, Chicago and L.A. It's not that big like that, but it ain't that small neither. And um, I get I get asked this all the time. Have I ever have I ever met? Of course, the Duke OG Giggity. No, I've been around him. I think one time. Matter of fact, I'm sure one time. And another time, I think motherfuckers tried to get us to meet. Um, first time I'm thinking about my partner RT did concert promotions. You know. And BG was hot then. BG was hot. So he booked BG to come out to Hammond, Louisiana. Yeah, I think that was Hammond, Louisiana. Kentwood, Hammond, somewhere around there. Nobody showed up. It was it was bad promotion on his part. Because, see, BG was too hot. And I don't think he promoted enough. And when you don't promote enough in places like that, they don't believe you coming. They, they don't want to get ripped off their money and stuff like that. But nobody showed. I'm talking about when I say that bitch was crickets. No one showed. And um, Baby pulled up with BG. Um, and I was in RT. Was in a um RT had a a red. Was it a red 5.0 with peanut butter interior? Was it a red 5.0 with peanut butter interior and a peanut butter drop top? I was on the passenger side. And a little skinny dude with buku gold in his mouth. Red dude, like, light skin, like, came up to the car. I forgot what they were talking about. And he said, man, he said, man, yeah, we thought you was probably some drug dealer or nothing, man. We see you a businessman. That's what he told RT. And I'm thinking in the past, see, damn, why, they, you know, why they come up? But I know not since, you know, I could tell why, you know, if it was a drug dealer, probably would I don't know. But he said he was a businessman. Yeah, RT was a businessman, but... You know, he, he moved around like he wasn't. But, yeah, he was a straight-up businessman. He wasn't into nothing, I don't think, illegal. But that dude that came to the car, that little dude, like skim the goals, that was gangster. Um, I see now by the face and all that stuff I see by the face. And I got my partner sent me a link about something he said about the cutoff. 
and I didn't meet him, but I would like to know that name that he was talking about because it was a time, and I, I want to know if this was the same time because see, now it's starting to make sense. It was a time that some cats was, it seemed like they was trying to get me and us to be interested in him. Um, I told this story before about when we had the weed house, like it was like a weed shop when I had the weed shop, right? And a dude was telling me, dude coming over here talking about he gangster cousin and he this and gangster this and gangster. So I had came out there to see what they were talking about because I didn't understand what was going on. And um, it was nothing. And another time I'm in the cutoff by um this lady 6'2". For those who from the cutoff back in the days, y'all know 6'2". She was a stone cold. I don't know if she passed or not, so I don't want to talk about it. But she was a stone cold crackhead. Um, and people use her house for stuff. So I remember one time I was in a in a house. That motherfucker came got me out the motherfucking house. And they was um basically it was something about a gangster. And it, it didn't make sense to me. So I every time I didn't really bother it because but it didn't make sense how they keep trying to bring this shit up. And it made sense when I got the link if it was the same time period. Oh, this nigga might have got one of y'all. And y'all trying to throw a cross. I don't know, but other than that, nah, I never met the dude, man. I think I seen him one time, and that time there, if I'm not, I could be wrong, but it's funny that he mentioned that in that video. My partner sent me that link, and I watched it, and I'm like, damn, I wonder if that was, because that's what he was thinking. But nah, I never met him like that. Um, New Orleans not that small, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you might be around each other if you at a club, if you at a, I'm pretty sure it's small enough, because I guarantee you, concerts and stuff and all that, we all was around each other. Um whole new orleans because back then you only had a few things popping seven days a week it was a certain two one or two clubs popping seven days a week so you're going to run into just on the weekend you might have had more than two you might have four or five of them but that still ain't a lot like a la and new york and stuff like that but nah another question i get oh <laughs> and rt yeah, I'm going to mention this, too, because it's funny. RT had something to say about Baby that time. I think Baby had came to the call and um, asked to use his cell phone. Asked RT to use his cell phone, and he called. I think he called his old lady or something. Because I'm in the pageant side. We listen. I'm on the pageant side listening. And while he was talking, Baby had his hand on the, on the, on the window right here. <laughs> and RT love his car. RT <laughs> love his car, man. And uh, he was like, and with baby walked up, he said, man, he said, dude had, had his hand print all on my shit, man. <laughs> it was funny, man. But nobody showed up to that concert, but it was fucked up. He still paid him, of course. He was showing up, but nobody came. It was no concert. And that's when BG was super hot. But that was all on RT because he didn't do promotions. Probably nobody knew it was there. He just thought the name was going to spread. It ain't work like that. But, um, oh, and how I know he called the chick because a red girl showed up. She was, she was red, man. Um, she was red. She was fine as hell, too. She popped up there. That's how long we sat there waiting for people to come. This girl might have came from New Orleans to Hammond and popped up on Baby. So I think that was one of them. I don't know, but I remember that. Another question be rising up. I can't believe this. Say, bro, I thought, which nigga probably don't even know my channel exists. But I remember a while back, I told Boosie to leave that shit alone. And I'm about to get into that. Leave, leave the boy giggity alone, man. Um, Because you can't win. The principles... Boosie trying to live by or Boosie live by it don't work on the internet today and it don't and honestly it, it, the reason it don't work on the internet today for two reasons number one the internet see things different and number two what's happening on the streets is totally different you understand and I keep telling people this it's a reason why when you go to jail they tell you don't let people see your docket don't let people see your paperwork you know why some people see your paperwork they would take that Go to the people and deal their way out of prison. That's snitching. That's rat. It happens. It's been happening. 
they got something called a snitch bond. I said this before. Snitching is at an all-time high. For some reason, the internet got people believing that there's this certain code that's only on the streets that the streets living by. They not living by that, man. Of course, you have your few. Back in the days, you had your few that snitched. Now you have your few that live by it. And they, the ones that live by it, they, teens, they seem to last longer. People just don't get it. Snitching and ratting, you might get out, but you ain't free. You know what I'm saying? And then not for long. But the reason why he losing that battle, because I, I got that question so much, I had to go see for myself. And I said, oh, man, because first of all, you got two Louisiana dudes, one from New Orleans, one from Baton Rouge. Louisiana cats got that charisma. That's why when Boosie do something, it go viral, the whole internet fuck with it. Then you got Gangsta. Gangsta seems to have more charisma. You know what I'm saying? Because see, it ain't about the snitch thing. And then about and another question I get, I'm going to get on that too about um, do I, and I, I'm a, I'm a pair. I got another question. It's about baby and gangsta. Y'all stay tuned, but I'm a, let me do this Boosie thing. Boosie cannot win that argument. He will not win. I thought Boosie was going to leave it alone. Don't fuck with it. That's it. You cannot win it because these people don't see it. First of all, they don't see him as a snitch because it's dead people and he didn't put no one in jail. You understand? That's number one. Number two is just he coming with the charisma, he coming with the jolting, he coming with the jokes. He... He know how to get him. He got him. Like he said, he the people's champ. I saw that shit. So your best out was to do, and I'm about to get on the baby thing. Your best out was to just leave that shit alone. Baby. Okay, baby said they ain't messing with each other. That's it. You don't hear him say nothing. He leave it alone. He don't say nothing. He don't give it a thing. And people ask me, what do I think about that? Matter of fact, a dude from Valens and Magnolia asked me this on set. On, on um what set that was oh shit i didn't grab my um what set that was and it's funny because i get asked that a lot and i wonder why people ask me what i think about it, it you know i don't know them dudes i mean i don't know them like that i didn't grow up with them i, I wasn't part of their crew so i guess it's just the internet you know but your boy just asked me i guess he wanted to see what i thought about it cool dude man and my partner made me realize who he was. That's why I wanted to tell him next time I see him. We was on the set of um, Lisa Frankenstein, I think. I oh, know, no. I probably shouldn't have said that. I, I think that's a no non-disclosure. But um, but your boy asked me. Boy, I said, "What you think about that, man?" And I told him. I said, "Bro, it ain't my crew. I don't, I don't, I don't think nothing of it." But I'm gonna get more in deep into it because I get that a lot. This is how I feel about that. Because it, they, they told you what it's about. Y'all saying that, okay, he this dead people. No one went to jail. Okay. But see, what y'all missed the point is a rule that Gangster made up. He said it out of his own mouth. He made up this rule because it's obvious he was boss of the crew, I'm guessing. He made up the rule. You don't snitch at all. You don't rats. He even said he hated rats. And you don't rat on dead people. So when you have a crew that live by rules, they live by morals for decades and decades and decades. That's how they've been living. Even if somebody inside the crew break it, it's going to cause problems. I know it happened in my crew. Not that, but other stuff. And if you've been living by that, so if we've been living by you don't talk to nobody. Not even, I don't give a fuck if you're ratting on dead people. You don't talk to nobody. You don't talk to them. You don't sit down and talk to them with them, period. If that's a rule that you made up and we've been living by it by decades, that's why the man said himself, he don't blame him. You feel me? He don't blame him. So that's, you know, and how I feel about that, that's, that's them. That's on them. And that's how they living it. I got no problem with it. Either or. Even if they choose to be around him. I had no problem with it. So that's why I don't understand why these people out here act like they care about other people's business. You know what I'm saying? That's on, you know, but I understand why. Because it's rules you've been living by forever. What is dumb, what is not. Some of you might be saying, well, the man got millions of dollars, man. You know what they have to the streets over. Nah, nah, nah. Streets ain't never over, man. Um, Because... 
Them people could come anytime from tax evasion. They could come for anything. You understand? And if you got rules within the crew that got you this much, think about it. Think about it. The way, the way baby been moving, the way that crew itself been moving, it made him one hundred hundreds of millions of dollars. You understand? Hundreds of millions of dollars. Why break it now? You know? So that's how I feel about it. As they crew, that's them. Ain't picking no sides in that. But I understand. And even the boy Giggity understand. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is, man. I mean, it's it's rules. And you gotta have rules. And that's the reason why you youngsters out here that got a little change can't make a lot because y'all ain't living by no rules and no morals. At all. And stuff like that is why Boosie can't win. Boosie needs to leave that alone, bro. You can't win that battle. And it look, I'm going to tell you how crazy it look, bro. Giggity ain't no rapper. Giggity ain't no movie star. Giggity ain't no, he's just not an entertainer, period. But it's obvious Boosie got his fans, but the overwhelming the overwhelming, if you have a need of the, it's overwhelmingly going towards gangster, and that's crazy. That's crazy. Cause gangster, I mean, cause Boosie, that's Boosie badass. You understand what I'm saying? And dude, know how to throw them crosses. He throwing the Ti thing in it, and that's another thing. Motherfucker, one, well, well, I only got a few questions about that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit on that. It's no way in the world. Listen to me. But then again, I'd be contradicting myself. Maybe it's rules. But maybe them Boosie rules. So I got to watch how I answer this. Maybe Boosie rules is I ain't fucking with nothing like that. So maybe I shouldn't say this. But I'm going to say this right now. I ain't in the streets no more. I'm not. Do I still hang with my dudes? Yeah. Am I still the same person? Definitely, yeah. I ain't gonna lie to you about that. I'm still the same person. By me being in the streets, I don't get into nothing. But if it comes down, it's coming down. Um. I, so, if I'm standing to make millions, putting out an album, because they go still buy T.I. shit. That's how come you know the shit don't change. It don't matter if T.I. said he told on his dead cousin to get out. It doesn't matter if he said that. I didn't hear him say it, but that's what they said he said. When he put out the album, they still go sell. I'm telling you now. And if y'all stand to make millions off putting out that album, but you then you heard Vlad pop that question and you said, oh, we not doing the album. I'm going to tell you what I would have done. I wouldn't have said nothing. I would have I would have just did all that behind the scenes, not on Vlad. And it kind of put Boosie in the cross because... If Boosie find out that that didn't happen and he just said that to be saying it, then it's hard for him to go back. And by him speaking on gangster, it's hard for him to go back. You know, all that pride, reputation shit. Let me tell y'all something. That's why you always got to stand on your ground and live it. And, um, and that's why the way Birdman handled it is the best way to handle it. Don't say nothing, because you never know. Another question. was well, somebody asked, just asked just there just now. Um, What was that again? Something about, oh, do you think they ought to reconcile? They being gangster. Once again, I ain't they, I ain't they motherfucking, I don't know. I will say this. If, and I'm going to say if, if they real brothers, blood brothers, I I I fuck with my brother again. I'd be jostling him all the time, but I fuck with him again. What I mean by jostling, it'd be some shit like, "Yeah, man, it's my brother, man. Why'd you say around him, though? Why'd you say around him, though?" I'd be laughing while he getting pissed. It'd be shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And if they not real brothers, then why should they? Too much bad blood going on. Too much bad info. Too much bad low going down. So. I mean, that's how I feel about that. Somebody had just a asked that, but um, blood brothers, yeah, man, always reconcile with your blood brother. But if it's not, and the reason I say if, cause 
I don't know. Um, I, like I said, I never knew him personally, but Cash Money Records been a movement in New Orleans forever. You hear a lot of stuff. I never heard they was brothers until the magazine mentioned it. Um, even Uptown, I heard him say brother, but if you know Baby, if you know Bird Man, he like a um. He, he he a real dude like a family dude man he and a lot of people his cousins his brothers stuff like that and you don't know if he's just saying that but that's a project thing too and a project man everybody cousin that's my cousin that's my this you, you you never know what that's about you know what i'm saying um so you know that's how i feel about that anything else man <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go to bed, man. I just had to cut it for something. That boy's stupid. Somebody said. I hope there was a female like that shit. Hold on. The East. Do I know such? Out the East? Kevin? What Kevin? Oh, that Kevin. Oh, um, I knew him. I knew him back when I was on, um, what, elementary, junior high. After that, I mean, I seen him around, but we ain't never hung like that. <laughs> Last time we hung was school. But, um, when he was in school, I was in school, but yeah, that's all I know. I can't really say too much about him because I learned one thing. You don't know a person if you ain't seen them in a while. Life changes people, trust me. But well, one day they gonna catch me drunk. Like I said, I ain't in the streets no more, but I still, man, I'm still that same person. Am I involved with Big Boy Records? Nah. No, 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 um, no, not at all. Well, that's it. Let me get out of here, man. Let me get out of here. It's getting hot out here. I'm fucking sweating. Look like it's about to rain. I need to stay out here. It might start feeling good. Damn, man, I cut myself. Do I know? Nah, I never met Master P. No, I'm lying. I, I seen him, been around him one time, bro. Um, back in the days, bro, let me tell you something. Everybody worried about their own crew. Everybody, they own, like, for as me, me personally, man, all I cared about was me and me and my me and my niggas, man. I didn't too much get in nobody else's business unless we done business. And I ain't trust anybody. See that? I didn't trust anybody. So I wasn't running around trying to be friends with people, man. Um when I tell them stories, I've been around people, we clicked. And some people we clicked, some you know, uh, we just but other than that, nah. I wasn't the one to be going around trying to be friendly and networking and stuff like that. Cause back in the day, you couldn't do that. You couldn't do that. I mean, you'd fuck around and get jacked, robbed, killed. You know what I'm saying? Trusting the wrong people. 